This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video tutorial, we'll show you how to make dinghy chaps for your inflatable boat. These dinghy chaps will protect your boat from damaging UV rays and also provide shape protection where desired. Follow this step-by-step -step video and you can DIY do it yourself using the materials and tools found at Sayerite. We'll be using Sunbrella marine grade fabric, shelter right vinyl, and Bifertex on the aft tube ends. A drawstring in a hem will be used along the outer edge to cinch the cover in place and YKK adhesive snads with snaps along the inner edge to secure it inside the boat. Here's Cindy to show you how it's done. Uh, we're going to start to work on this uh, dinghy and make the chaps for it. Um, so I'm going to start by measuring for our patterning material and for our umbrella. I'm going to use a cloth tape measure and start over here a little bit beyond where my piece will begin and just go around. So I'm going to need about 120 inches, probably a little bit more than that. So 120 inches divided by 36 is 3.3 yards. So I'm going to round that up to four yards. So I have plenty of patterning material. And then I'm going to double that for my umbrella and get eight yards of umbrella to cover this. The other measurement that I need is from the floor of the dinghy out around to the rub rail and about six inches longer than that. So um, my width of my patterning material, I'm going to start with about 35, 36 inches wide. And um, so I have enough to work with on both sides. And the width of this umbrella that I'm going to purchase is 46 inches. So it'll work for this. Um, you can determine what width you need by the size of uh, your dinghy. You may need the 60 inch or you may be able to get away with the 46. Here is the material list that we used for our dinghy chaps. The calculations to determine how much material you may need for your dinghy are shown in yellow. Feel free to modify the items and quantities for your project as you see fit. This materials lists and the tools that we used will also be shown at the end of this video. Patterning is the first stage. We'll be using a 12 gauge plastipane. When I cut my um, pieces for the patterning, I'm going to make one pattern over here, one here from this seam to this seam, and one from this seam to this seam. I'm going to ignore this because this is uh, actually pretty straight right here. It doesn't really have much shape. So I'm going to go from here to here, and then another one for the cone at the back. So I'll end up with four pieces, and then the other side will be a mirror image. The first piece that I need the patterning material for is going to be this piece right here. So I'm going to uh, measure a width, and I'm going to start with a 25 inch piece of the patterning material um, to make it easier to work with so I'm not working with a great big piece to pattern this area right here. Uh, we're using this uh, 12, clear 12 gauge vinyl to make our patterns with. Um, it has a tendency to stick to the vinyl of the dinghy so it'll stay in place while we're patterning and we can also see through it so when we make our marks with our uh, sharpie marker we'll be able to see everything really well. And I folded this in half to cut my uh, 25 inches for my first pattern. Uh, we're going to deflate this um, dinghy just a little bit before we make our patterns and then when we put the air back into it, it'll make the patterns night or the cover really snug. Yeah, I have the patterning material laid on this piece right here. This is the first one I'm going to do and I've got it um, extra long in the front and I want it to fit nice and smooth so I'm going to start by making some cuts to let this part lay down uh, be careful with your scissors never cut into the area that you're actually patterning in other words past the seams And I'm going to draw a little bit outside the edge of this seam so that I can cut some of this extra 
um, patterning material off and work with it a little bit easier. These lines that are placed outside the seam are used to make the pattern smaller so it rests even better on the dinghy. And then I'm going to make an ending part, ending mark down here so I know where to cut it off down there. I'm going to draw a line at the top of those rub rails so that I have a reference uh, to put it back on when I, after I take it off and cut the extra fabric. Don't cut on that line. That's just a reference to put it back on. Now she can cut the pattern material to a smaller size. As mentioned earlier, this will allow it to rest nicely on the dinghy. Then she can actually place the true seam lines on the pattern material with the Sharpie marker. Each panel will be marked along the seams of the dinghy, the outer edges of the seam. I'm marking along the outside edge of this seam and that's what will be our cut line for this p pattern piece. And I'm going to stop right about there on each side because I end up with some fullness right here. So to get rid of that fullness, I'm going to mark across the bottom at two inches. Cindy is using the Sarah canvas patterning ruler and place the marker at the two inch location and marking up two inches from the floor. So now I have a line at two inches from the bottom of the boat across here. And I'm going to cut up the center of this piece until it lays nice. Creating a slit in the pattern material will allow the pattern material to rest nicely on the dinghy at that location. Later on, we'll be putting a wedge in this area. And then I can go back and mark my seam lines out here. You will end up with an area here with no patterning material in it at all, but it needs that um, opening to fit around the curve of this piece. That opening will be filled with a wedge of Sunbrella fabric. We'll cover that in a later step. Cindy is now cutting across those lines she struck on the pattern material that were two inches off the floor. I'm going to trim this off on those lines I just made and uh, make sure it has a good fit on this side. And then I'll go back and work on the outside. Cindy will now evaluate it to make sure it fits well before she makes any more cuts. It's two inches up off the floor. And now with the wedge up against the boat, she will take a measurement at the extreme bottom of that wedge opening. Now I'm holding these two pieces in place along my cut edge, along the outer edge of that seam, and I'm going to measure at the bottom how wide that opening is, and it looks like it's four inches. So I'll need to add a four inch pie shaped piece into there when I uh, make this piece. To help her remember that, she'll mark four inches at that bottom edge. So I'm going to write that on here that I need four inches added into this area right here. Now I'm on the outside marking uh, my lines and I had this reference line right here when I was working on the inside. Um, I'm only going to mark down to this edge right here in the center of that. And then from there, when I take it off, I'm going to measure down for my hem. This dotted line is being struck along the rub rail. Later, we will add fabric under that dotted line to create a casing for a drawstring. I'm going to trim some of this off so we don't have so much to work with. And um, then when I take it off, I'll measure down from this line for my hem and my casing. And then I'm just going to cut straight up from the bottom to my marks on this side. Mm -hmm. 
So before I take this off, I'm going to label it. The piece and that this is the outside of it. Okay, here's where we made that cut in the center of this piece. When you cut your fabric out, it's going to lay flat like this. You're going to leave that together. We're going to add that four inches in after we cut this piece out. When it comes time to cut out the fabric, we'll be showing how to do that. Coming up next, we'll work on the pattern for the side of the bow. When I put this piece on, I want to make sure I have plenty down here and plenty on the inside so that I can mark all of my um, hems where I need them. The first thing I'm going to mark is this obstacle to go around because I want this to fit correctly. So I want to mark this before I mark any of my outside edges. So I'm going to take and kind of fold this together and make a snip in the center. If an obstacle stands proud, make some cuts allowing the pattern material to lay flat around it before marking your true cut lines around the obstacle. And then I'm going to cut out to these angles until I get it to lay nice and flat around it. Now this is nice and smooth around the outside edges of this um, piece, so I'm going to trace right around the edge. And that will also be my guideline. If this piece moves, I'll know that I need to adjust it and get this right back in place. Then I'm going to um, mark along the edge of this rail so that I have another reference um, to keep this piece in place as I'm working with it. So I'm going to make a couple of cuts in this way to release this fullness right here and then I can mark the edge of this seam before I work on the inside. When cutting relief slits, do not cut past the seam. Something we did not do in this video but may be a good suggestion is when you're marking the pattern material to use a red marker for port side and a green marker for starboard side when you're marking around obstacles because obstacles may not be in the same position on port and starboard sides. We will be using this pattern and flipping it when we come to do the other side of the uh, dinghy. We do not make multiple patterns for each side. However, we always check them prior to using them for either side, port or starboard. I can mark this up to the point where it's laying smooth. You can see right here I've got some fullness that I need to work out from the other side. So I'm not going to go any farther than right there on marking this seam. And I'm going to trim off some of this extra and make sure it lays good. When making each one of these panels, notice that she's using the outside of the seam that's on the dinghy, not the inside. Now because I have this rope on this side, I'm going to cut a hole that I just big enough that I can pull the rope through and then I'll pattern this um, after I get everything else in place. Right now we're working on the port side, so we should use a red marker to mark around this obstacle. When we flip this pattern material to the starboard side, we'll notice that the hole that we made for this obstacle is in a different position. So then we should be using a green marker when it comes to using this pattern on the starboard side. There's too much pattern material for it to lay nicely against the dinghy, so Cindy is cutting relief slits and then she'll cut away the excess material once she's determined she has enough to cover this location. I'm going to make some marks for the bottom at my two inches before I do too much more trimming on this. That actually works really well. <laughs> I'm going to mark these seams here, but you can see what happens um, when I pull this across. We get a little bit of bunching right here. If you would like this to fit really snug, you can cut another line up here and put a pie-shaped piece in. We're going to wait and see how the fabric fits before we do that on ours. We opted not to do it at that location, but that is a possibility for your dinghy if required. 
Now that I have everything else marked, I'm going to mark this inner circle where the rope is. Now she'll cut along those lines that should match up with the seam lines on the dinghy. I'm, going to, I'm ready to cut out these two areas and I'm going to make this circle a little rounder. To do this, we'll use the Sayerite canvas patterning ruler. Insert an awl in the hole at the top and then just mark around it with a Sharpie marker. We did not show it, but we cut out the holes for the obstacles. I'm going to label this one pout before I move it and put it over on the other side to check the other side. And I'm also going to go on the inside and check and make sure that my seams are all okay. Pout stands for port side out. Make sure that these two obstacles are lined up. And I can see over here that my seam is a little bit too big, so I've drawn another line along the edge of the um, seam in the dinghy. And I'm going to trim that extra off. It fits well down here. And this is just a little bit too big also. I'm going to make a new line here. Before I trim those off, I'm going to take it over to the other side and make sure that it fits well over here also. Dinghy should be symmetrical and obstacles should have been secured in the same spot on both starboard and port sides. However, they are often not. When checking this port pattern on the starboard side, the panel is flipped. It looks like I need to make the same adjustments on this side, except that this is not in the right place for this hole. So I'm going to mark the center of this right here. This is the starboard side. We really should be using a green Sharpie marker. And that's marker. where my circle is going to be on this piece. I'm not going to cut that out right now. I'm going to cut it out later when I cut the fabric out. And this side, I'm going to label Sout. Starboard out. And that piece is finished. I just have to trim off my extra down here and over here. Since we didn't use red or green markers, she's going to mark an S here for starboard. Next up, we'll pattern the side. We're going to use the port side to do that. I'm going to let a little bit of air out of this side before I do the patterning. Okay, I'm ready to do my third piece, and this piece goes from here to here, and it has all of these cutouts in it. So I'm going to start with this, this one here because it's the biggest one, and make sure you have enough down here and enough on the inside um, before you start this cutting. Before I trace around these, I have this one um, opened up so it can relax around there. I'm going to go ahead and open all of them up and then trace them all. We have all of these holes opened up, so it's laying nice and flat up there, and I'm going to cut up to, to the center of this also, so that the vinyl will lay around this piece. Okay, we have this laying um, pretty flat now with all these cutouts done. I'm going to start again with this um, big one and mark around the perimeter of it. Uh, since this piece of webbing uh, where the seat hooks in is laying nice and flat, I'm not going to cut a slit in this. I'm just going to mark all the way around it, and I'll cut it out later. And now I'm going to give myself another reference point and mark the middle of the rub rail all the way down.
And I'm going to need to cut some of this to release it before I go too far in this, but I can mark this edge of it up until about here. I'm going to put a couple marks, marks up from the floor as far as I can reach while I'm working on this end. And then I'm going to get this corner so that it fits well. It's actually laying really smooth right up against there now, so I'm going to just take the marker and make some light marks right along that edge where it's laying up against the back of the boat. And I'm also going to mark the outside edges of this piece so that I can add some reinforcement there. This step is probably not that necessary. We actually add reinforcement one and a half inches away from any cutouts. But it's not a bad idea to do this. Now you can see that my patterning material right here does not go all the way to the boat like it should. I'm going to leave that laying just like it is and mark this seam out here. Make my two inch mark on this piece also. And I won't use this edge at all. I'll use this edge and measure over this distance when I cut my fabric and cut the same width. This piece is actually at a slant, so it's pretty hard to get this piece cut correctly to fit on both sides. I know this side fits, so if I use this side as my guideline and then use this width and cut straight down here on my fabric, this side is also going to fit. Um, we have this little air valve right here, so I'm going to make a dot in the center of it and put a couple marks at the outside edge and then draw a circle later when I have a flat piece to work with. And then I need to mark my two inches from the bottom along the front also. I'm going to trim some of the excess off the bottom of this and then take it off the um, dinghy and trim the rest of the sides and then put it back on for size. I'm going to put an X right here, actually two X's, to remind me not to use this line to cut my fabric with. I'm going to use this line over here when I cut my fabric. Those two X's have been placed on the outside edge of the transom. Here's my cutting line on the inside of the boat, and then I'm going to go over this width to um, take this into consideration right here, and then I'm going to measure over that width. One inch, it looks like, and follow this line one inch out when I cut my fabric. So I'll be cutting right up here against this up to here and then it'll fit around that uh, back part of the boat.
here's where that circle needs to be drawn to allow access to the airport. It's going to use the Sayrite canvas patterning ruler and an awl to do that. Everything's been cut out. Now it's time to check the pattern on this, the port side. Now I'm ready to check my pattern and make sure everything fits well. Before I um, finish marking this, I'm going to um, mark with mark pout on it so I get it on the right side before I take it over to the other side. And then I'm going to check the inside uh, back and make sure it's okay. So when I put my pattern on to test everything and make sure everything is in the right spot, you can see that I have this area right here a little bit too big. So I'm just going to tuck that down into that corner and make a new line in the corner. And this area right here is also too big. So I'm going to make a new line out here also. So I've turned this over so it's a mirror image of the other side. And I'm going to check and make sure that all these spots line up also. And it looks like everything fits really well except for this one piece right here. So I'm going to trace around this one again so I don't have to make a whole new pattern for this one piece. Give myself a new line. If we were to use a green sharpie here, it'd be easy to distinguish this the starboard side. And I'm not going to cut this one out until I cut it on the fabric. Whoops! Cindy just marked on the dinghy with the marker. She couldn't tell where the pattern material stopped. And this line here is the port side, and this new line up here will be the starboard side. So now that I have this off the boat, I'm going to go back and mark this initial um, shape with the P going the correct direction so that I don't make a mistake when I cut these out. Then I'll know that this one gets cut with this side and the S going the correct way gets cut with the starboard side. One last pattern to make and that's the pattern for the aft tube end. Okay, we're ready to do the last, uh, last piece here which is this uh, cone piece. I'm gonna mark, I got my plastic laid on here and I'm going to mark at the top edge of this for my uh, cut line up here. And I'm going to mark the edge of the rub rail again. And then I'm going to mark at this outside edge of this seam. going to use the ruler again to mark a two inch line up from the uh, up from the table in this case. Um, this part right here we measured along the two inches like everywhere else but we may need to modify this as we put it together but I am going to leave it there so that I make sure it is long enough and then I'll change it with the fabric if I need to. And I'm just going to label that with out so that I know which side it goes on and make sure I do a mirror image of the other side. Patterning is complete. It's now time to take the patterns and cut out the fabric. That's coming up next. These lines right here are the lines that I made at the rub rail and I want my um, cut line to be three inches longer than that. So I'm going to use the ruler and put this top edge at my marks and my pen at three inches. And guide it along my marks to get my three inch line. This needs to be done for every single pattern. We're not going to show all of them. And this is where I will cut my fabric out. This will be right here along the rub rail. And that will allow room for a casing and the cord around the bottom. We didn't show it, but here's another panel with the line struck three inches down from the dotted line that was at the rub rail. 
I'm ready to lay my pieces out on this umbrella and I'm going to try to get them as close as possible to uh, make good use of the fabric. And there's one, one area where I need to add the two inches, which would be the inside of the boat, and that's right here and right here um, on these two pieces. That's not only the case for these two pieces, but for every pattern. The inside, we need to add at least two no. inches for a hem. You could add three inches this if you the like. Inside, yeah. Then simply trace around the pattern material. We're using a soapstone pencil. The soapstone pencil is great because you can see it nicely on colored sunbrella fabrics and it washes off beautifully. This is the slit at the uh, bow on the inside of the bow and she's going to mark that slit with the soapstone pencil all the way up to the point where she stopped cutting the slit. To keep confusion to a minimal, mark the fabric with what panel this is. This is the bow. And um, we know that this is the wrong circle that's already cut out because it's out is facing up and I have the S there for my starboard side. Um, on, on this one, this is going to be the center of our circle. Uh, remember, they weren't the same on each side, so I'm going to put a dot right there and then make a circle with the ruler after I remove this. You'll notice the sout, or starboard out, is facing up, so this is the starboard pattern. She's now going to place a circle at the dot using the Sarite canvas patterning ruler and an awl. So there's the hole for the starboard side. Now that panel will be flipped so we can do the port side. This piece I need two of and I'm going to make sure that I have it turned over with the port side out this time and trace around it again. Don't forget to add the two inches or three inches for the inside hem. I'm going to label this one with the port out so that I don't get them mixed up. Here again on this one we're adding the two inches for the inside hem. Here we're working on that transom slit. Now this is the area where we're not going to use this line right here at all, so don't cut anything over here. I'm going to measure this distance. So I'm going to put my hole, uh, my centering hole right here on this and follow the line again at three quarters. And that's a little bit wobbly, but that's where I'm going to cut this piece. I'm not going to cut any of this out. I'm going to leave that there. So I'm going to add two inches to the bottom of this piece also, just like all the others. And then I'm going to connect these two and something will probably need to be adjusted in here when I get it all put together, but I'm going to leave it like that for right now. When I turn this over, I'll do the other line. I'll cut the other line out and use this as my line for uh, the, whole, the cutout. Port side is done. She flips the panel over and now she'll work on the starboard. Now since I'm going to have to move this to get to this area, I'm going to trace this one that I've cut out so that I can um, have a new pattern to cut out the starboard hole. You can tell that we're working on the starboard side because the pout or to outside is not facing the correct way.
So I'm going to set this aside for a few minutes while I trace the rest of it. I'm going to take this little pattern that I made from the first uh, window there and slide it under here so that it matches up with the starboard lines. And then I can trace around this one to get my cut out on this side. And I need to label this one so I don't get it confused with the other side. Now I'm going to use the hot knife and cut this out around all of my um, soapstone markings. And I'm going to cut these also. By using the Cerite Edge hot knife, we can cut the fabric. And the hot knife will seal the edge of the fabric to help keep it from unraveling. Now here along the hem, it is probably not as important because there'll be a double hem there. But definitely for those cutouts, it's very important to use a hot knife. If you don't have a professional hot knife like the Cerite Edge hot knife, you can use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun. Notice that Cindy does not keep the lever depressed all the time. She presses the lever, lets it heat up, and then releases it and presses it again after a few seconds. That keeps the uh, blade in good condition. Here at these cutouts, it's a little bit difficult to get around them with the R blade that is included with the Cerite Edge hot knife, but as you can tell, it is possible. To help prevent damage to the tabletop below, Cindy is using a sheet of glass, so anytime she cuts, she's being sure that the sheet of glass is underneath that surface. In many cases, the cutouts are often finished with a binding that's folded around the edge, but working binding around a corner, especially an inside corner, can be very difficult. That right there will be underneath the vinyl after we put the um, piece of vinyl around this. Cindy has alluded to what we're going to be doing with the cutouts. Instead of using binding, we're going to use vinyl on the inside and outside. That's coming up a little bit later. I'm ready to cut the Pfeiffer text for this uh, cone piece, so I'm just going to cut it exactly the size of my pattern. And this I'll cut with the scissors and not the hot knife. The Pfeiffer text vinyl mesh does not unravel, so we can cut it with scissors. The Pfeiffertex vinyl mesh will allow drainage at the end of our tubes where the cones are. Great fabric to use for that. I'm going to mark this side P out for port out. And then I'm going to turn it over so I get a mirror image of that piece. We've got all of our pieces cut out and we're um, putting them on to test and make sure we've got a good fit on them. and. Back here, on this edge, this piece is just a little bit wide, so I'm going to line it up so that this seam, this edge is on the edge of the seam on the boat, and I'm going to take the soapstone marker and go right into that corner and mark so I can trim this off. And I think that's the only adjustment that we need to make right now. Before sewing any of these panels together or even reinforcing the cutouts with a vinyl material like Shelterite, it's always a good idea to make sure they fit perfectly now. So if modifications need to be made, you can do it prior to that step. When we test our pieces on the um, dinghy itself, this one here is just a little bit too big along the sides. So I'm going to take the ruler and mark out here where I want my new line to be. This is one of the many advantages of using vinyl around the cutout instead of binding. And when we put the vinyl patch on to make this stronger, all this will be covered up. This hole is a little bit too big, but the vinyl that we'll use around each of the cutouts will resolve that issue. Here's a look ahead. Notice the hole, it's no longer there anymore. The vinyl resolved the issue. This is the part that was a little bit too big that goes around the transom reinforced, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that off right now.
we'll do the same thing to the other side's panel. Everything fits perfectly now. Now it's time to reinforce the cutouts. We're gonna use Shelter Right from Sarah Right to do that task. Okay, I'm gonna um, start with putting the V in this piece um, to reinforce this area and make it go around this curve a little bit better. Shelter right will be used for everything except for this V. Any V that you have that had to take the shape should be done with Sunbrella marine grade fabric. And I wanted this, the bottom of this to be four inches open. If you remember on the boat, when we were patterning, we drew four inches on the pattern. That's at the extreme bottom. Make sure the V is open four inches there. So Cindy is creating the wedge. So I'm going to give myself another inch beyond the four inches. This extra inch will be for seam allowance to sew in the wedge. And use the edge of your uh, V as a guideline. And then I'm going to add the inch all the way up so that it's uh, nice and strong. and an inch above the end of my V also. And I'm gonna cut that out with the hot knife. I'm getting ready to sew this piece into my V, so I'm gonna use the seam stick to hold it in place. Cindy's using Sayerite's famous seam stick for canvas. This is a double-sided tape that is used to hold things in place while you take them to the sewing machine and sew them. Makes the job much easier. Make sure that you have the, the writing on the outside when you do this. You want this piece to be underneath. And I'm going to use this uh, line that I drew along here to guide me and get this in the right spot. And then I'm going to take it to the machine and sew up this uh, line and back down this line. To sew this portion, we're going to put the machine in a zigzag, about a four or five millimeter long zigzag stitch length. And we do a little bit of reversing here at the end. We have opted to use a V92 polyester thread. This one is an anti-wick thread. Since our Islander 37 sailboat is located on Lake Michigan, the climate is mostly moderate, so the thread may last five to 10 years if left out in the sun continuously. However, if the chaps were used in the tropics where UV concentration is very high, this polyester thread may only last two to three years max. So those of you that are in tropics or want the best thread, you should pick Proflin thread from Sayerite. It's a PTFE thread that will not rot and colors stay true for the life of the canvas. The Profilin brand thread also works 30 to 40% better in an oscillating hook sewing machine, like the Ultrafeed, than any other brand of PTFE thread on the market. You can see what adding this little V in here did. It made it so this piece doesn't lay flat anymore, which is going to help it take that curve in the front of the boat. As discussed earlier, instead of using binding for the cutouts, we're going to use Shelterite vinyl. So we're going to make the reinforcement pieces for these two cutouts. So I'm going to start with a square, 
that's uh, about two inches bigger on each side of the cutout. So I'm going to cut this one eight by eight, and I need two of those. And I'm going to use the yellow wax pencil to write on this vinyl. As we talked about before, installing binding on an inside curve or circle is very difficult. So instead, we're going to sandwich the Sunbrella fabric between two layers of this vinyl fabric. And right now we're cutting patches that are oversized and we'll trim them to size here in a second. This vinyl has a, a shiny side and a dull side. Um, we're going to use the dull side as the right side. You can use either side. Um, we just like the way the dull side looks better. So on one of these 8 inch squares I'm going to mark uh, the center. The clear acrylic ruler from Sayrite is great for measuring and patterning as you can so see I'm in the I'm going to draw a line at 4 inches from each side. And then with my sunbrella piece right side up, I'm going to put this piece that I just marked the center on underneath here and um, just eyeball it to the center of my cutout. And then use the yellow pencil again to trace around my cutout. Sunbrella marine grade fabric does not have a right side and a wrong side. So when Cindy says right side up, she's referring to how the pattern should lay on the dinghy. Then I have that shape, just like the shape that I cut in this umbrella, and I'm going to fold it to start my cut and just make a little snip so I have an opening to put the scissors in. And cut uh, to the inside of my yellow line. I'm actually cutting the yellow line off. And I'm going to test it. The reason she cut inside the yellow line is we want the vinyl to be a slightly bigger than the cutout in this umbrella. And it looks like it's a pretty good fit, so I'm going to take it back out and lay my other square on top and trace it again. And I'll do the same thing on this one and cut the yellow line off. I'm going to just use a little bit of this uh, seam stick to hold these together while I cut the outside edge. And we decided on one and a half inches for the size of our uh, vinyl protection. So I'm marking one and a half inches out from my cutout. Um, and the reason I'm doing this after I've cut it out is that they're not all the same and they're not all completely balanced. So if you cut it out first, you might not have one and a half inches on all the sides. Upon using the Sarite canvas ruler to strike lines, we find that it's a perfect one and a half inches wide. So it'll be perfect for making these reinforcing areas around each one of the cutouts. No need to use a hot knife to cut out the Shelterite vinyl fabric. It will not unravel. And I'm going to put more seam stick on this to hold it together um, so when I take it over to the sewing machine, it stays in place while I'm sewing it. We will install all of the reinforcing patches around all of the cutouts prior to taking it to the sewing machine and sewing. So use plenty of basting tape. So the one tape. with my yellow markings on the inside is my back side. I'm going to stick that underneath and get it lined up. Now I can lay this one right on top and have a, a really good match on both sides. And then I'll take it to the sewing machine and zigzag around the outside edge and around the inside edge. No reason to take it to the machine till we have the others reinforced. So for the circle piece I'm going to cut a square that's uh, 7 by 7. So I'm about 2 inches bigger all the way around the circle. And mark the center three and a half both ways.
and trace around the circle that you already cut. An inch and a half is three. As you can see, the Sarah Canvas Patterning Ruler works excellent for marking perfect circles. That's awesome. We'll need two of these, one for the outside surface and one for the inside surface. Same procedure. Okay, it looks like uh, it's a pretty good fit, so we're going to put seam stick on this to hold it in place also until I get it to the sewing machine. Now this piece is ready to go to the sewing machine and stitch around the circle on the inside and the outside. Okay, we attached uh, the ore on here so we can see um, where it's going to rub and it, potentially it could rub all the way over to here and to here. Um, you can choose how wide to make this uh, vinyl protection. We're going to make ours come straight down from here and stop at the top of the rub rail. Um, so I'm going to mark the top of the rub rail with everything in place so that I know where to stop the vinyl. And then we'll make the outer perimeter of this piece inch and a half wide like we have the others and just come straight down right here. Okay. Um, I'm going to make this piece again about two inches wider on each side to start with. So I'm going to start with a 14 wide by about 15 long. And I'll need to cut two of those, one for each side, but I'm going to do them one at a time. Okay, to, um, since I can't mark the center of this because this um, cutout is not centered, um, I'm going to lay this piece of vinyl at the top of my ruler and eyeball it centered this way. And I can feel the edge of my ruler so I can put this marked line at the top of my ruler and know that the vinyl is going to stop on the rip rub rail where I want it to. And then I can trace around my cutout. And I'm just going to use a couple small pieces of seam stick on here to hold this together while I trace out my uh, opening again. At the top corners, we'll make these rounded. That'll look better. Is that too much round? No, that's good. Okay. Now I can lay these two pieces together and cut my shape out again around the outside edges. Then we'll use plenty of basting tape and baste one to the outside surface and one to the inside surface. The shiny side typically faces the marine grade umbrella fabric. Now I'm going to take the one that has the B marked on it and put it behind. Cindy marked a B on it earlier, indicating the back. Line it up with my cutout in this umbrella. And then place the other one on top of it. And that's ready to go to the machine and be stitched. This is the piece that goes around the transom, and I'm going to um, cut it, give myself a little bit extra to work with. So I'm going to cut it 9 inches wide by 16 inches tall. I'm going to mark the center of this um, just uh, up the length of it and since I can't really center this piece I just need to give myself a guideline so I make sure I have enough on both sides and enough at the top. So 
So I have all this extra at the top to make my protection to go up and around here. And make sure I have at least an inch and a half on each side down here. And then trace around the opening again. A soapstone pencil marks the Sunbrella canvas beautifully, but it does not work on the vinyl fabric, so we're using a yellow grease pencil for the vinyl. Okay, before I cut out my um, piece right here that needs to uh, be cut away, I'm going to make my outside lines on this one. And, uh, my ruler's an inch and a half, so I'm going to draw a line outside of my cutout line at an inch and a half on both sides. And then I'm going to put the the awl in at the top of my line and draw a three inch circle around here to connect to give um, protection around the top of this. Okay, now I can cut my uh, center piece out and I can cut around the outside edges and I'm going to stop cutting right here and use that line to cut the circle. The seam stick is applied so it can be replicated for the other side. Please ignore the yellow marks on the vinyl fabric underneath this one we just cut out. Those were mistakes, so you will not have that on yours. Yes, we did make a mistake, and we did not show it on film. No reason to show you doing something wrong. Uh, we're having trouble getting this stuck down, but uh, once it's stuck down, we can just uh, cut it out to make a duplicate. Now I can cut my second piece out just like the first one. It's confirmed, it's a good fit. Now we'll peel them apart and baste them to the top side and underside of this umbrella marine grade fabric. I'm ready to zigzag these around both edges and I want to stitch from the outside um, so that the stitching looks really good on the outside. So I'm going to just start and I'm going to try to keep my zigzag on the vinyl but very close to the edge of the vinyl. So I'm going to run the edge of the vinyl just inside the edge of this uh, center foot piece. If you do not have a zigzag sewing machine, a straight stitch will work fine for this as well. And when I come to the angle, I'm going to stop with a needle down in the fabric and lift the foot up and turn it and then start stitching again. We're using the Sarite Ultrafeed LSZ1. This is the plus model. Great sewing machine for canvas, upholstery, and craft projects. It's also good for sail making. You want to sew with the outside surface facing up so it looks best. When we flip the assembly, you'll notice that the patches on the underside aren't quite exactly even. We'll still sew through them, but they won't look nearly as good as the top surface. So always sew these on from the outside surface facing up. Most of our sewing always includes reversing at the beginning of the stitch and at the end of the stitch. Cindy did not do that here. Instead, she sews over where she started by approximately an inch or two. When I come back to where I started, I just uh, stitched a couple inches over the previous stitching. And to do the inside, I'm going to use uh, the left side of the presser foot and go around the same way. Instead of doing reversing, she'll do the same procedure again. It actually does look a little bit better this way. Thank you. 
now we're done sewing this reinforcing patch on top of the cutout. Let's take a look and see what the underside looks like. As you can see, it's not as good as the outside surface. That's why we sew the outside surface up. Here we're doing a circle. Same procedure. Sew the outside, then sew the inside. Anytime any major adjustment needs to be made, the needle will be buried, the foot lifted, the fabric turned, the foot lowered, and then continue to sew. We're reinforcing each of the cutouts. We'll also put a reinforcing strip around the rub rail, but anywhere else you want reinforcing strips for shafe protection, now's the time to add it before the panels are sewn together. I'm going to make another push for the Sayerite Ultrafeed LSZ1 sewing machine. The Sayerite Ultrafeed sewing machine is the world's best portable walking foot sewing machine. And that is the truth. You will not find a better, uh, more affordable, portable walking foot sewing machine than the Sayerite Ultrafeed sewing machines. If you don't have one, you really should consider buying one from Sayerite today. We'll continue to sew around all of the cutouts for obstacles as you've seen in the video. Here is the transom portion. We'll sew around the entire perimeter of it as well. Sandwiching the shelter right vinyl over top of the sunbrella fabric creates a perfect way to protect the sunbrella which is prone to abrasion and also prone to unraveling. Using binding can accomplish this same task by folding it over the cuts or the cut edges. However, as discussed earlier, doing inside curves and tight turns is very difficult with binding. So this is a perfect way to reinforce the cutouts and keep the umbrella intact. All right, we have a lot of cutouts to reinforce and we're not gonna show any more of this. Let's move on. After sewing all the reinforcing patches over top of the uh, obstacle cutouts, lay it over the dinghy and check out your work. Make sure everything looks good before proceeding. And as you can see in the video, ours looks great. Coming up next, we'll sew the sections together using a semi-flat belt seam. If you desire more shape-resistant patches made out of vinyl, now's the time to do it before you sew these panels together. We've got all of our uh, vinyl protection pieces on and we're ready to start seaming our individual pieces together. Um, so I'm going to start at the front again and this uh, center piece is just a little bit longer than the side so I'm going to divide the difference between the top and the bottom. And I'm going to take and put a few clips in this uh, inside curve right here so it will uh, go around the curve a little bit better when I stitch it. These two panels are facing, so the outside surfaces are facing each other. And I'm going to use the seam stick here also to hold this in place. Um, this fabric is a little bit hard to pin through. In the next chapter, or the following chapter, we'll be installing a shafe-resistant patch around the entire perimeter of the chaps at the rub rail. You want to do that after the panels have been joined together. That's why we're holding off on that shape resistant vinyl patch or strip. We'll be sewing each one of these panels together with a semi flat filled seam. We'll be using a straight stitch that is about six millimeters in length. I'm going to use a three-quarter inch seam on this, so I'm going to put the um, deluxe magnetic guide on here, and I'm going to slide my seam gauge underneath my needle, and let the needle go right down at three-quarters of an inch, and then put my guide on at the end of the seam gauge. The deluxe magnetic guide is another handy tool that will keep our stitch three-quarter of an one. inch from the edge. You can get it at Sayerite. So this first stitch is three quarter of an inch from the raw edge. And the raw edge is lined up perfectly with the second panel underneath it. At the beginning and the end, do some reversing to lock your stitch in place. Before sewing our top stitch, we're gonna join the adjacent panel on this, the starboard side. So inside surfaces will face each other and we'll create a stitch again, just as we did on the port side. We'll use the double-sided tape to base the panels together. 
And before I do the flat fell seam over here, I'm going to go ahead and attach the other side so I can fit it to the boat before I do all that top stitching and make sure it's going to be okay. We'll show an illustration here showing how a semi flat felled seam is created. The only difference is this illustration shows a half inch for our first stitch. We're using three quarter of an inch. So I have both of these seams sewn now, but I did not um, top stitch them down. So I'm going to test the fit first before I do that. And it looks like these are falling where they should over here on the sides also. Right along the edge of this seam. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the flat fell seam up here and then attach a side. To finish the semi flat felled seam we'll move the magnetic guide and now we'll create the top stitch. So I'm going to push both seams underneath away from the center. and use this inner edge of the presser foot to guide along my seam. When creating the top stitch, be sure you sew through that, in our case, three quarter inch tail that is on the underside. So the stitch is being sewn through three layers of fabric. A semi flat failed seam is a fairly strong stitch. The first stitch is hidden completely from the elements, so that keeps it strong, while the top stitch binds three layers of fabric together, so it's a nice strong seam and looks really good from the outside surface. Notice that Cindy splays the panels apart so that it is actually folded right on that first stitch and keeps this top stitch about an eighth inch away from the splayed or folded portion of the fabric. At the beginning and the end, do some reversing to lock the stitch in place. Outside surface of the fabric looks great. The underside, as seen here, is not as nice looking, but this is still a very popular seam. So there's what it looks like on the back side. We'll follow that same procedure for the second seam. And I'll do the same thing on the other side, push it away from the center and use the edge of the presser foot as my guide. It's sometimes easier to lay the panels back on the boat, then take the next panel, this is the port side panel, and lay it on top so outside surfaces face each other. So this one goes right sides together onto this side and the other one goes right sides together on the other side. And we'll do the same thing, a three quarter inch seam and then a flat fell seam. We'll not show any more of sewing these panels together. Let's move ahead and show sewing the ends. We're ready to um, finish the end of this cone piece and we have the, the Pfeiffer text cut to match and we've checked the seams up here to make sure that everything's in the right place. So I'm going to use the vinyl on the end of this to reinforce it. So I'm going to trace this outside edge of the Pfeiffer text. And then I want this protection piece to be three inches. When marking parallel lines, be sure to hold the ruler perpendicular to the first line. And I'm going to do another row of stitching an inch from the edge. So I'm going to do another line across here at two inches so I have a guideline for that stitching. And then I can just cut this piece out and lay it on top of the fiber tags. A couple pieces of uh, seam stick will hold this in place while I stitch it. We prefer to use a zigzag stitch for this, so we're going to put the machine in about a 4 to 5 millimeter stitch length. And the machine's now set for zigzag. One more row at the outside edge. So 
So you can see that this vinyl protection comes right to the end of the cone. And then we're going to put a pocket down here uh, for a cord. Um, now I need to attach it up here. So I'm going to sew this, um, turn it over and sew it right sides together onto the end of this piece. We'll switch the machine back to straight stitch and extend the stitch length to 6 millimeter. We'll also use the deluxe magnetic guide again. I'm going to start sewing this on the inside of the boat. Um, we left, or excuse me, the outside. We left a little bit of extra on that end, so I want to make sure this side matches. This side isn't going to match when I get to the end. And I'm not going to use seam stick on this one because of this curve. It's going to be easier to just um, walk it around as I stitch. This too will be a semi-flat felled seam. Our first stitch is three quarter of an inch from the raw edge of the fabric assembly. And now I'm going to push all of that seam towards the back and do the semi-flat felled seam um, with the presser foot edge as my guide. Now that all the panels have been sewn together, and before we install the shape resistant strip around the rub rail, we need to determine where the edges should fall. That's coming up next. Lay the chaps over the dinghy. Um, at this point, we're going to test the fit again and um, blow it back up so that we can see uh, where this edge falls. And then if, if we're not happy with it, we can trim it now. Um, so I'm going to pump this back up. At this point, if we've let out a little bit of air, you want to put the air completely back into the dinghy and all two. I can see that this part right here is a little bit too long. Um, and we planned it that way so that we would have extra to work with right up in there. So, and right here also I need to make a mark to trim it off. So I'm going to draw a line from this piece to this piece. And trim that off. And then here I need to trim a little bit off. And um, I can use a ruler to draw that from here, this point to this point, and even it up. Um, the rest of it looks like it's in the spot that we want it. Okay, the other place that we need to trim a little bit is right here where we left some extra when we started. So I'm going to just mark where the separation is between this uh, white and the black, and then I'm going to angle from here over to here and cut that off. Okay, the other um, place that we need to mark before we take this back off again is right at the edge of the rub rail. So I'm going to take the soapstone and just make a nice clear mark like this. And I'm going to go all the way around uh, the dinghy when I do this. The yellow does not stay on the Pfeiffer ticks very well or the white, so we're just going to use our two lines here and here and draw a line across there for that edge. It's now time to create the rub rail shave protection strip. So I'm going to cut um, just some random two inch strips of the shelterite for our, to go around the rub rail to protect it. And then I'm going to uh, size them as I put them on. Best way to cut strips of vinyl or any other fabric is to use a rotary cutter, a cutting mat, and the clear acrylic ruler. All available from Sailrite. Well, here's where I'm going to add the vinyl protection to this, and I want it to be a half an inch below my rub rail. So I'm going to mark with this, this ruler is an inch and a half wide. I'm going to mark inch and a half above and lay the edge of my vinyl 
right along here and zigzag it, which will leave me a half an inch below this line when it's all attached. I'm going to butt the edge of the um, shelter right, right up against the Pfeiffer text and start my zigzag right here. And as I sew, I'm going to line the edge of the Pfeiffer text up with my drawn line on this umbrella. When I come to these seams, I don't want to fold this because it's going to put too much thickness right there. So I'm going to trim this off and start a new one just beyond this seam so I don't have all that thickness right there. I'm going to go back and zigzag down here to secure these together and even up these bottom edges uh, just so it looks nice. And I'll do that on all the places where I stopped and started with the shelter right. The next chapter is optional. We'll be creating tie-down openings in the casing. Our chaps will be held down in place via a leech line rope installed in a casing around the sides. When the line is cinched up, it will grip around the rub rail and help hold the chaps onto the dinghy. However, it mostly holds at edges and corners and not well on long straight runs. So if you would like, you can create tie down openings in the casing to allow for line to be tied to an object on your dinghy. In many cases, the leech line that goes around the outside perimeter in a sleeve or casing may be all that's required to hold the chaps in place. If this type of tie-down opening is not desired, a fabric tab with a grommet can be sewn under the chaps instead. It's your choice. To reinforce this uh, center area where we're going to put the grommets, I'm going to cut a 4 by 6 inch piece of shelter right and apply it right here. I'm going to find the center of this, which is about ten and a half. This is at the front of our dinghy, and there is an attachment point directly under this location at the center. This patch will allow for reinforcement of grommets. And center this piece in there, and then I'm going to take it to the machine and stitch all the way around four sides without this included. Okay, I am going to stitch across this area on the, on the shelter right, just in here, because we're going to put the grommets in here, and we need this stitched first before the grommets go in. Okay. 
The next step is to decide where to put our grommets. So I'm going to measure, find the center of this, which is three inches, and we decided an inch and a half out from the center would be good. In retrospect, we should have installed the grommets closer to the bottom edge of the two inch vinyl strip that protects the canvas at the rub rail. So I'm going to put this side of the grommet in the back. That would have allowed the line to enter and exit the grommets more smoothly. I'm going to freeze the video and show exactly where the grommet should have been installed. Where we installed the grommet still works, but this would have been a better location, right next to the edge of that two inch strip. And this one goes on top. We're using spur grommets. Spur grommets have a thicker metal and teeth that actually bite into the fabric, much better than a common washer or plain washer grommet. In lieu of this, a fabric tab can be made out of several layers of umbrella, a grommet inserted, and it sewn onto the edge of the chaps, as shown here. Using tie-down openings or sewing on tabs is both an optional step. Next up, we'll be installing the cord in a casing. I'm going to mark a 3 inch, inch line all the way around. Uh, 3 8 inch down from the bottom of the shelter right and that's going to be the bottom of my casing for the line. We can see through the clear acrylic ruler making it easy to mark the fabric 3 8 inch down from the vinyl strip. And after I have my line drawn all the way around I'm going to use the Cerite canvas patterning ruler and fold on my line and use the edge of the ruler to crease my fabric, my sunbrella, so it'll stay in place as I stitch it. I don't really want to use a uh, seam stick all the way around this, so this will hold it in place nicely. It makes a really nice crease. Feel free to use the seam stick if you prefer. Um, I'm going to cut my line before I start sewing, so I'm going to give myself uh, plenty of extra out here and just walk it around the edge. Cindy started at the front or middle of the chaps, so she'll need to multiply this times two. So I'm just gonna do this then. Is that all right? Yeah. And okay. Then the and then go. There at the aft end, we need to extra. go around the a uh, cone and also to the transom plus some extra. And then I'm going to fold that in half because I need that to go all the way around the other side also. So on, on this side, which is the outside of the boat, here's where we've marked our casing line down here. Here's where we marked the rub rail. So I want to be an inch and a half below that for my casing on this side. So I'm going to line up the bottom of the red and draw a line across. And trim that off. And on the transom side, here's where we marked this area right here between the white and the black and I'm going to cut it off right there because I want my casing on this side to be up a little bit higher where we secure this. So I'm going to mark, line up my ruler with our mark there and the edge here. Having it be higher and here will off. help pull the cover down because we'll be installing an eye strap later on as seen here in a future step. I'm going to start stitching at the back inside edge of the cone and go here and then bring my line across and start stitching again over here. And I'm going to use a zigzag for this. 
and insert my line at the same time as I'm sewing the pocket in. While I'm right here, I'm going to trim off this little edge just so that it looks a little bit nicer. Don't cut your cord. And then bring the cord around to the other side of the cone and fold it under and stitch, start stitching again. Just keep your cord out of the way. The fabric is folded back one and a half inches approximately. When we get to the actual Sumbrella Marine Grade fabric, we're going to fold it directly on top of the score line that we made in the fabric. So it'll be folded much further back. If done right, this should secure the two inch vinyl strip all at the same time while creating the casing for the rope or leech line. We've reached a tie down opening at the front of our dinghy. So we're going to do some reversing here because the grommets are going to be in the way when we sew. We're going to skip over the grommets because that area has already been sewn down and start directly uh, opposite of the grommets on the next side. Now I'm ready to thread my line up through the grommet and back down. And then I'll start stitching again on the other side. As you can see, this exposes part of the leech line rope so that you can just tie another rope to the leech line to an object directly under it. Be sure these tie down openings are directly under some sort of object you can tie to. Make sure you pull your line back down into your pocket before you start stitching. You can see now that it would have been better if the grommets were installed closer to the edge of the two inch facing strip. That way the leech line would take a more direct path across the grommets and back into the casing. We're going to skip ahead here. Just continue sewing until you reach the end. Next, we'll concentrate on the inside edge of the chaps. Okay, I'm ready to work on the inside hem now, and this is where we had a little bit too much length, these two areas. So I'm going to angle this long spot down to meet there, and then I'm going to straighten this up right here. Okay, I'm going to do a two, a double rolled hem here, a half an inch for um, to accommodate the YKK snads that we're going to put on the inside of the boat to hold this down. We will be installing snaps to this hem, and those snaps will secure to our YKK snads, which are adhesive snap studs that we will glue to the inflatable dinghy a little later on. So I'm going to use the seam stick to do that. We made a half inch hem, but yours can be larger. If it's larger, it's easier to get the snap socket and button into the hem when installing the snaps. And now I'm going to go back and put another layer of this and fold it up again 
A fastener stays more secure in the fabric if it goes through three layers, at least, of the fabric assembly. That's why we're creating a double hem here, so the snap can go through three layers. Cindy is creasing the fabric with a Sayerite Fabric Canvas Ruler. This helps to keep the hem in place and also helps to secure the double-sided seam stick. To sew this hem, a straight stitch is used with the needle in center position and the stitch length set to about 6 millimeters in length. That keeps puckering to a minimal. We'll sew all around the chaps. Let's move on. Now that the edges of the chap are complete and the leech lines installed in the casing, we're going to use the micro marine ratchet to tension the cord in the casing. We're going to do this at the transom. That's coming up next. There are multiple ways to tension the cording. We're going to show you one of our favorite ways. We're ready to attach these little strap eyes onto the back and this is what's going to carry this cord over to the center so that we can cinch it all down. And I'm going to mark those. And I put it a little bit lower than where my strap comes out so that it'll help keep this part pulled down. We'll pre-drill some holes, then use stainless steel screws and screw in the strap eye. We're also going to use butyl tape. I'm going to use just a little bit of this uh, butyl tape and roll it into a line and wrap it around the top of this half inch screw and this will seal the hole. I would rather see the butyl tape be installed on the threaded post after it's been installed on the base of the strap eye. That way it helps fill the hole that was drilled in the transom. Now a bowline knot is tied to the end of the leech line cord. Next, we'll use the micro marine ratchet. It includes an eighth inch rope and two stainless steel hooks. We will remove the eighth inch black rope. We will simply use the ratchet system of this item and cinch up our leech line. You may have to help the leech line around the perimeter as you cinch it up. Notice how easily it releases as well. Here at the transom, it won't be in the way of anything. We wanted to show how well the leech line cinches around the dinghy chaps. Here at the corners you can see it cinches around and holds tightly, but any long straight runs it's rather loose. So you may want to use some sort of a tie down at certain locations. It's your choice. On our chaps we have two grommets at the front and we've allowed the leech line in the casing to be exposed there. So we'll use another section of leech line rope and attach it to the dinghy ring here at the front. Using snaps on an inflatable dinghy is sometimes impossible. That's not the case if we use YKK snads from Sailrite. Here, Brian is using a pencil and marking on the dinghy where the bottom edge of the chaps rest. At each one of these locations, a snap will be installed. The location and the frequency of the snaps is completely up to you. We're going a lot more than 24 inches apart. I would recommend anywhere from 10 to 18 inches apart for a more secure and tightly fitting cover. To install the YKK snads from Sayerite, use an alcohol prep pad and first clean the surface thoroughly where you want each snad to be installed. The Sayerite highly recommends using 3M Tape Primer 94, which is an adhesive promoter. Be sure to follow the directions on the can thoroughly. We're going to use a brush and apply this promoter wherever a YKK snad needs to be installed. We'll apply two coats, waiting approximately five minutes between coats. For inflatable dinghies, Sayerite recommends the YKK snad 
with a 25 millimeter or 40 millimeter flexible base. We're going to be using the 25 millimeter adhesive backed flexible base YKK snads with stud. Remove the liner from the back of the disc. Position snap in position and roll in place. Press down on the snap to secure to substrate. Work all the way around the snap and in the center. Do not touch the adhesive with fingertips to avoid contamination. Wait approximately 72 hours before using the YKK snad. This will allow the adhesive to bond securely to the substrate. Now snap studs can be installed on inflatable dinghies without drilling using the YKK snads from Sayerite. Over application of the 3M94 adhesive promoter can be removed with the alcohol prep pad. All that's necessary now is to install a snap in the correct spot of the hem of each location for the YKK snads and we're going to do that with the press and snap tool from Sayerite. We've installed a snap button and a snap socket in the press and snap tool. To install the snap, we'll use a soapstone pencil and mark directly over the stud of the YKK snad. Then we'll position the snap with the button on the outside of the chap over that marked location, depress the lever of the press and snap tool, and the snap will be installed. Remember, we waited 72 hours before snapping this snap nice. to the YKK snad to allow the adhesive to bond securely to the substrate. 11 64 inch barrels for the snap button are standard up to approximately five layers of canvas. If your canvas assembly is thicker than that you may need the quarter inch barrel also available from Sayerite. The dinghy chaps are now complete. Coming up next is the materials lists and tools list that we use to build these dinghy chaps. You may use this list to order the materials from Sayerite and also these calculations to determine how much is needed for your chaps. These are the tools that were required to build our chaps. Many of these great tools can be ordered at Sayerite. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayerite website or subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your loyal support. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.